Welcome back once again to PonyFans.com's Scouting Report. Joined as always by former SMU tight end and current radio analyst John Hampton. Coming off of Saturday's 40-7 win over Northwestern State, uh, the Mustangs now head east for their first Conference USA road game. Early kickoff, 11 a.m. at Memphis. And for the second week in a row, SMU is playing a team that might be a little bit hard to judge because... Memphis got blown out its first two weeks by Mississippi State and Arkansas State. Then they come back and they beat Austin P, which is a football championship ser series team. Uh, we used to call it 1AA. How much of that do you think is Memphis starting to get a little bit better, and how much of it is the level of competition that they played? Uh, the level of competition that they played. Miss Mississippi State's pretty good, obviously, out of the SEC. So when that score was a little lopsided, could understand it. I didn't understand the Arkansas State game being <clears throat> so one-sided, um, but then they <clears throat> made some changes, actually fired the defensive coordinator before the Austin P game, um, but the, the, you know, the school out of Clarksville, Tennessee, they're just, they're not the football power, and, and Memphis got them a win, but I don't think it speaks much to how much better Memphis has, has gotten in that one week. All right, when you look at how the SMU offense is going to match up, they're facing a defense when you look at these numbers, Memphis's defense is giving up 541 yards a game, including 222 on the ground, 6.0 per carry. Uh, are we looking at another five-touchdown week from Zach Line? Are they going to be running all day long? Well, you know, any good coaches, and especially June Jones, they'll, they'll take what the defense gives them. And if, if it's a run and shoot by definition, but it's a, it's a good ground game that SMU has. So if they can get out there and, and move the line of scrimmage and Zach's Got the hot hand. I don't, I don't see. I don't think you go in expecting to hit a certain number of rushing touchdowns. It's just if, if you've got an offense that's built between the 20s to get up and down through the air, but then you get into the red zone and you're still in that spread out attack, you got to have somebody run it in between the tackles. And, and Zach Lyon is, is the option. So he's, he's a great red zone option. You don't, all, you don't often think of Taylor Reed as a, as a passing threat, but the Memphis quarterback happens to have the same name as SMU's junior Mike linebacker. I was wondering where you're going with that. Yeah, exactly. And and he, he looks like I mean he's a pretty good sized kid. He's six three, two fifteen. Reportedly has a pretty strong arm, but he is a true freshman. A year ago at this time, he's you know getting ready for high school prom or something like that. If you're Tom Mason, are you just turning loose a blitz on every play? Are you trying to disguise everything you've got in order to confuse this guy? How do you approach a guy who's that young and green? Young players, young quarterbacks, just remove their running game. And so you don't give them on first first down, you don't give them any option. They're not moving forward. They're not, they're not chopping, staying ahead of the down. So it's second and six, third and two, third and three. Those are easy throws for, for quarterbacks to make. So state, you know, first down defense has got to be great. Uh, don't, don't give Memphis silly yardage, you know, the hidden yardage and penalties, uh, missing some tackles in space. But if you just eliminate the running game, no matter what quarter, senior, Ben Roethlisberger struggles if you take away his running game. So a true freshman especially, and then when you get into the passing game, um, you know, if you can bring some pressure with that front seven without having to actually blitz a, a whole lot of people, if you can keep bodies in the, in the backfield, the, in the back end of it, through your secondary, and then get home with those front three guys, it could be a, a nightmare for any quarterback. You mentioned their running game. They have two guys, Billy Foster and Artaves Gibson, with almost identical statistics. Foster has 44 carries for 171 yards. Gibson has 41 carries for 160. They're both averaging 3.9 yards a carry. Yesterday after practice, June Jones compared Foster to Cyrus Gray, said he could be the best running back they see all year. Um, is that the key then? Take the run out and force the freshman passer to beat you? Yeah, in any, any game, you know, from from Pee Wee's through the NFL. I mean, you just, if you eliminate the running game and you know that they're going to pass, then that, that falls into your favor. They've got some good guys, um, some talent-wise, some talented backs. It's just a matter of a running back is only as good as his offensive line in front of him. So they're able to get, and that's a very, uh, the greater Memphis area, and they reach down into Louisiana and then into Mississippi, Alabama for their recruiting. They're going to get plenty of athletes. And so it's, I'm sure Foster deserves the praise that June's going to give him that he's one of the greatest. This is a school that spit out D'Angelo Williams, okay? And, and that's within the last five years. So these players and college, high school players know to play. You can go become a first-round draft pick out of Memphis if you go play. And, and if you can get an offensive line around you to move some people, they're just struggling to, to get 
that that cohesion up front to create running rooms because these backs they are talented. It's just a matter of having having somewhere to run. Well, and and speaking of their offensive line, it's a huge line. It, it averages I don't know six four three ten or something like that. And yesterday, Tom Mason was saying that these guys have the look of some NFL caliber players. I mean, they are big, they're strong, they're athletic. If they can open up lanes, obviously that's where Memphis gets the ball moving. Um, switching to the other side, on defense, uh, SMU just faced a Northwestern State team that had a small, quick defensive line. Now you see a line that averages 296 across the front, including um, nose tackle who goes 6'5", 350. Oof. Yeah, enjoy that for the interior guys. Um, which style of line do you think SMU's line matches up better with? Well, a good offensive coordinator or a coach will put the, the rules in place for their offensive line. They're almost fail-safe. You can't go wrong, whether the team is big and strong and fast, small and fast, slow. It, it's all you work the communication, especially the offensive line. You go watch them practice. It's rep, 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 feet work, feet work, drills, hand placement. And so they're not – that. it's basically taking whatever the defense will do out of the equation and just go through your simple rules. So in other words – you and I are going to block these two guys however we have to do it, but we'll, we'll practice and communicate our call you know, for us to get to those two guys and so on. So it really takes away whatever the defense has. You can look at the scouting report and see what they do, but it's, especially offensive line play, it's your rules. It's what you guys practice every single day. The combination's up to the next level and, and the kickouts. I, I would be shocked if SMU, if you see their performance peak and valley, because of a team's defensive line and what they put out. A&M aside, that was a good squad. And SMU still found some, some yards in the first half. But going forward here on out, maybe TCU would be a little bit different. But, but going forward, they just have to stay to their rules, and you'll, you'll be successful no matter what. Memphis's top three tacklers are all linebackers. And there are some defenses that have a very strong defensive line, a very strong secondary, that an offense can kind of scheme to get away from a little bit. Linebackers being... Yes, they're small, but they're fast. And being in the middle of the defense, is there any way that Coach Jones can try to game plan to sort of run away from these linebackers? Or do you just line up and do what you do and see if they've got the horses to stop you? Well, you referenced how big their defensive line is. If, if that size up front, most likely they're absorbing blockers, holding on to blockers, letting the run, linebackers run free to make tackles. So if you're running combinations for SMU, getting to that second level, Winning at the front, winning the first line of scrimmage, and then whoever has to peel off to the second level to get the linebacker. If SMU is, is working that, then you may see secondary players leading tacklers. If, if you can get to that second level, that's, that's going to be the challenge for SMU is, is to be able to work through uh, and not let, run, not let linebackers run free. And if they are, then that's going to be whoever you're back at. Zach Line this week, if he's one-on-one -on -one against a linebacker, he's got to make him miss or run over him. And, as the game goes on, you'll start to see a lot less effort out of the Memphis defense because hitting Zach Line for four quarters just it doesn't, doesn't seem very plausible. On paper, it may look like SMU has something of a statistical edge uh, in this game, but the Mustangs' next victory over Memphis will be their first victory over Memphis. SMU is 0-3 all time. Does that play into these guys' heads at all? Do they, does that even get brought up to these players saying, hey, our school has never beaten the team we're about to play? It should, and I don't think anybody on the roster has been beaten by them. No, the last I, one was I, I 07 or 08, I think. So, <clears throat> it's in that sense, this is a whole new program, a whole new regime. They, they're just looking at them. Brand new opponent, never played them before, don't know anything about them. I think on the outside, it's, for guys like us, it's, it's interesting to see if SMU is making progress, regardless of where Memphis is going. If, if SMU can go out and, and control the game, and win handily, then that, that shows that we've made some, some progress. One note about this game that, that used to be not too uncommon, but kind of has been in the last couple of years, is SMU is Memphis's homecoming opponent this year. And it used to be, you know, okay, you schedule a team that you think you're going to beat, and, but with the way the, the Mustangs have progressed over the last few years, should they take that as an insult? Can that be used as extra fuel on Saturday? No, I... Being someone's homecoming game is it's pretty personal at the high school level. You can get offended by it there, but I, I don't even know who's SMU play for homecoming this year. Uh, exactly, I, yeah. I don't even know. Right. I, I don't. I mean, 
I think it's, it may be more insulting on Memphis's part when they look up in the stands on their homecoming and, and their program has gotten to the point where they've lost so much that they don't have anybody in the bleachers. That could be more of the insult on their part. And, and I don't, I'm not meaning to slight, I'm just, you get a homecoming game, it's to bring all the interest back, bring the people back on campus, and they've just been in a, in a bad, bad, bad way for, for a while now. And I, I saw a stat the other day, <clears throat> uh, their margin of defeat over the last 20 games is as high as it's been in college sports in the last 10 years. More so than your Florida Internationals and your whoever, take, you know, Ball State from back when they were at their depths. I mean, these, they're not playing very good right now. They, they are desperate for a win, so whoever their homecoming is, it's up to SMU to just go out and, and control the game regardless. All right. We'll I will be interested to see what kind of queen they have, though. I'll have my binoculars <laughs> in the press box to see if, because it, it's, that gives you a chance. We were at Southern Miss's homecoming a couple years ago. It's talented. If it's got a direction and a state, it's going to have some attractive ladies. East Carolina had a homecoming a couple years ago. It was impressive. I don't know that Memphis will be as strong. So the key is having a direction in the state, in the school name? Yeah, that's exactly right. All right, we'll get a full report on that. Uh, before we go, though, uh, be sure to join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash ponyfans. Uh, you can write in questions. We'll pick one or two out each week to ask John. And uh, this one being from... You had a couple good ones in there this week. Uh, we, did have, we did have several good ones this week. Um, one of them being from someone by the name of Class of 81. See, this week's game... Born. That was the year you were born? I'm sure he appreciates that. <laughs> <I don't>. uh, <laughs> this Somebody's week's game gonna... starts at 11 a.m. What does that do to the pregame routine? Do they condense it, or do they just wake the team up at the crack of dawn and start everything really early? How does that affect it to start a game so early? Well, SB practices in the morning, which is a good sign. That, you know, if you're practicing at 7 a.m., your body, your, your biological clock is already moving. They eat. Uh, right after they practice in the morning, so I guess at 8, 8.30, 9 o'clock, they've got their, their big meal. Their pregame meal like, is typically four hours before kickoff, so 7 a.m. they'll have their meal. Um, but it, it doesn't really change a whole lot. You might take a little bit longer to get moving, maybe. If I know that we played here. We played University of Hawaii, coached by June Jones, uh, 2001 maybe season. We got out 27 to nothing. It was an 11 8. It was almost a cruel joke to make a Hawaii come from the islands into the, east, into the States and play at 11 a.m. because their biological clock was like 6 o'clock, 6 a.m. And it took them three quarters to wake up. And we were up 27 nothing and got beat 30 to 27 in, in overtime. I don't want to talk about that game much because it was, it was sickening, but it may take a little bit of time to get rolling. But I think it's, it's genius on June's part that they practice so early. As it is, you get the you know you get these kids. Young people may not be morning people, and and he puts them in that root, routine. So hopefully that'll pay off. Neither are not so young people. All right, we can't end on talking about that game then. So we'll do one more then from Lefty, which says, John, would you rather end this season with a trip back to Hawaii for another Hawaii Bowl or a trip back to Memphis? Well, I know the company line is to go to Memphis because you've won the conference, and I I agree with that as well. Right and. I'm probably not very popular for saying this, but I don't, I don't, I mean, I've done Hawaii let's see, two, three times now, two as a player and then once as the radio guy. I'm kind of done with it. You can I, handle January in Memphis? I, I can handle it. I don't care. I'm in a booth. We get AC, we get heat. We can wear a jacket. It's not, I'm not playing. I don't mind it. I don't, I don't it's a long way out to Hawaii, but I think as a program, not to make light of it, as a program, it shows that. You've, you've progressed. You've won the conference. You know that's the goal every year to to, to do that. And I, I hope that's. I would much rather be in Memphis than Hawaii come January or December. All right. Well, we'll, we'll revisit that again at the end of the year. But um, for John Hampton, um, this is the PonyFans.com scouting report. Kickoff is early, 11 a.m. Turn it on on Fox Sports Southwest, but turn the volume down and listen to Rich Phillips and John Hampton and Sean Bass on the radio. We'll yeah. The radio guys may struggle in the morning at 11 a.m. kickoff, too. We, that's not my real strength. I have no doubt. We'll come up. Saturday mornings are, uh, it just depends on how much fun Bill Street can be Friday night. That'll, that'll determine how, uh, how into it Saturday morning I am. I may need a couple quarters to get going. That's something else we'll need to report on next week. Thanks very much. We'll see you next week.